Hi, uh, my name's James. I am 24 years old. My pronouns are he, him, they, them, and I identify as bisexual. So I'm doing my PhD in creative arts and English. I work uh, both at my old high school as an English tutor and at La Trobe, actually, uh, as part of the counselling service. So work keeps me pretty busy. Yeah, and obviously the PhD will dominate my every waking moment for the next four years, so you know. So what's your involvement with um, the counselling and, and the other services uh, at Latrobe? So I'm actually one of the uh, facilitators of a program called Queer Chat. So it's a social support group for queer students on campus run through the counselling service. Um, and we basically just every week get together in the counselling service. We have like biscuits, drinks, and just sort of get together. We have generally it's a guided dis- uh, discussion. But the point of it really is just to give queer students place to come, a chance to meet people, that kind of, again, social support structure. Because coming to university and sort of negotiating that new space as a queer person can be quite difficult, particularly when you have a lot of students who have come from like rural backgrounds, for example, who have had to kind of tamp down on their queerness or have come from home lives that are complicated, or there's like a whole slew of different circumstances that bring people into that room. Yeah. So I just help run that from week to week and it's a great job. I absolutely love it. Have you always been this, you know, sort of, because you're a very, you seem to be a very confident person to me. It's all a lie. Have you, (laughs) have you ever felt when you started uni, were you this same person or do you think that uni has helped facilitate um, who you are now? Well, I, so I sort of figured out I was bisexual when I started at uni. Uh, I was actually at the University of Melbourne before I transferred to La Trobe. Just to, like, I was doing a degree that I absolutely hated and I'm just like, I have to get out, I have to get out. I was lucky in the sense that when I figured out I was bisexual, I kind of went, okay, cool. Like, I just kind of went, you're not straight, so what, bye? Yeah, that works. So I didn't really have that kind of internal grappling with it. Obviously, you have the kind of complicated elements of like other people learning about it and having to deal with that, like family, friends and things like that. Very early on when I started at La Trobe, I was like, I'm just going to be me. And it, I've never really felt especially impeded by that. Obviously, there are spaces where you come in, you have to kind of negotiate the room and go, maybe I'm not going to be as loud. I think it was my, I think it was my second year at La Trobe. I started actually attending Queer Chat. And that was sort of my first introduction more broadly to the queer community on campus, which is why me now helping to facilitate it. It's really rewarding for the fact that I can sort of help people the way the program helped me, because it gave me that when, when I started, I was kind of that student who's like, I'll go to class and I'll go home. I won't socialize. And like, and it's not sustainable. Latrobe's out in Bundora. There's nothing around there. Totally. Like you've got you've to totally. make use of the time you're there. Yep. So that was where I met a lot of my friends and sort of those support structures. And yeah, so the fact that I could potentially help someone else who's coming to the program is really rewarding. It just makes me smile. That's so lovely. That makes me smile as well because I, when I was at uni, I um, was very much that sort of go to class and go home type of mentality. Yeah. And I think that because I was not out, I wasn't really grappling with anything, but I definitely wasn't out mm, at the no, time. Of course. And I think that having more queer spaces um, and readily available at school with, yeah. you know, a sort of larger – at not advertising, I guess, because yeah, definitely, you know, people definitely. don't really find out about this stuff. And I didn't find out about it till my last semester. And by then I was part-time anyway. Exactly. Um, and so I think that it would have been, yeah, a, a really great help to have something like the, mm. the, like the queer chat and your social groups and um, some of the other people I've spoken to have told me that you have book clubs and study circles. Yeah, and, yeah. And the, um, like so the queer department is obviously run through the student union, union on campus and we've just got a new queer officer, started the new year, and they're excellent like have really uh really kicked it up with like events and tried to kick because we've had we've had some dodgy queer offices <laughs> so we've done really well this year to sort of have the events and have that real presence and i mean this year was our first year marching at the pride parade the, awesome. yeah, and we had like our midsummer stall that was much better than it was last year so we've really stepped up trying to make sure we're visible on campus because that's vital and i mean we've got we were at o week and we're definitely trying to pull out all the stops and be as visible and as take up as much space and let people know that we're there. That's awesome. So um, where can people find you guys, like just throughout the year and, and how can they so come and hang out? there's a Facebook page for the queer department where our queer officer regularly posts, like this is the events that are coming up and really well advertised. In terms of queer chat, if you go to the counselling service, yeah, through counselling they'll be able to sort of give you the information you need to attend. Um, there's also the queer lounge on campus, which is in the union building. 
absolutely painful to find. They've just stuck us in like a little concrete closet underground, but it's fine. Oh, no. We have Wi-Fi. We don't have windows. We don't have external windows, but it's fine. Who, need, like, who needs natural you light? You have a space. Exactly. Together, yeah. And it's a lovely space. So, like, there's always, there's always someone there. Joy Podcasts. Where you want them, when you want them.